content packages at the core, right? And you can see it was three full days of filming, $30,000 package this time. Welcome to the most legendary workshop ever. So the purpose of this presentation is to show you how dialing in your kind of specific packages, building them into products that you offer your clients, how you can provide more value, charge a lot more, get a lot more work for them. So that is what we're going to jump into. What type of clients are the ones that are going to be paying for something like this? You have to be looking for clients that have higher value offers and profit margins. So in other words, whenever they make a sale, they're going to make a lot more off of just one sale versus needing to make a hundred sales to get to that kind of like break even point on what they're going to be investing in your marketing. It's a lot easier to pitch a $5,000 a month package and say, look, all we need is two sales for this to make sense a month. Do you not think we can get two sales versus look, all we need is a hundred sales each month. Do you not think we can get a hundred sales? It's a, it's just a much easier way to justify kind of the, the cost you're using. The other thing is finding companies that have a million dollars in year in revenue was kind of my starting point. The reason being, these are companies that have existing systems in place. They have the ability to scale. They're prepared to invest in marketing. They know they need to invest in marketing and they're looking for growth to keep growing their company. So what do I mean by like existing systems? Over here is like a very, very, very simple breakdown of how a funnel could work. You know, you have paid ads, you have search, you have email marketing, you have social media content. There's a lot of different ways that traffic can come into a landing page or a website. The core thing that most of these sites are trying to do is, you know, either sell a product or service. So they want phone calls, emails, or purchases from that. So what we're doing is we're looking at everything that a company has in place currently. And now we're coming in as content strategists to figure out, Hey, based on what I'm seeing, if we did this, 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 and this, like that would help everything just get 10 times better and set you guys up with the strongest foundation ever to run more paid ads or to take on that next kind of marketing angle you want to go after or whatever it is. The other thing is they're used to investing in marketing to spend $20,000 to a startup, you know, that's very scary. You don't know if it's going to work. You haven't done it in the past, unless they're a very seasoned entrepreneur, but try to find these kind of companies and companies that are, are producing the way you know that, Hey, where, where, where were you guys last year? Where would you like to be this year? You know, what was your annual revenue last year? How much are you trying to, to grow? You know, I need to know how to structure kind of like a plan for you based on what your goals are. Otherwise I'm just going to be throwing some stuff at you. That might not make sense. The core starting point for all of this is earn the deal through earn the deal is how we figure out all the kind of pain points of what the client is dealing with. And that's where we're able to position these packages in a way that makes just so much sense for them. And then we break it down and kind of show them exactly how this all can be implemented within their marketing funnel. So the biggest thing here too, is qualifying the client. You know, I hear a lot of people saying like they can't get their deals closed over a certain amount. Oftentimes what I found with me was I was just talking to the wrong clients. I had the right bait on the hook, but I was fishing in the wrong pond. It's always like the analogy I love to use. By further pre-qualifying clients and going after a different client base, it actually let me jump into these packages relatively easy, like a lot easier than I thought. Break down kind of what's currently happening within their company, what their pain points are. We look for other areas of opportunity. You know, when it comes time to present our plan, we're educating them on, hey, based on everything you told me, this is why I think we can do this. And this is how it's going to help each of these pain points that you brought up before. And then there's several ways to pitch this. You can pitch it as a, a one-off package. You can pitch it as a content retainer. You could pitch it as a setup just to be running commercial campaigns. But the biggest thing is like follow the process with earn the deal. Because when you skip steps here, it becomes incredibly challenging to go back to this point once you're further down the road with a client. Content packages at the core, right? These can be anything from 5K to 50K one time. I mean, you can go even higher, obviously, uh, or you could be positioning them as a one month retainer. What I like to do is like, say it's $25,000 package. I'll say, look, you know, the cost is 25,000. We take 50% up front, 50% when it's done. Like, oh, is there anything we can do to break that pricing up? Oh yeah, actually we can do a six month retainer at $5,000 a month, you know, and be getting you all this ongoing content. Obviously you're going to pay a little bit more 
because we're having to spread those payments out and, and do all like, it's not as efficient to be doing it month after month versus getting it all done at once. So it's another little way that you could even get an extra five grand if you're able to drag their payments out or whatnot. But I film most of these packages the same way. It's all talking head with B-roll. And we focus on like brand videos, testimonials, frequently asked questions, um, and explainer or experiential videos. The reason I love this style of filming and making the videos is you're just interviewing key people that are speaking about what they already know. You know, it's like if I ask you guys questions about video, you can speak rather intelligently about it versus trying to convince someone who's never looked at video marketing on how to do that stuff. These are the people you're going to be interviewing, like key executives, CEOs, whatever it may be, whoever makes sense. And, and the client's going to be the one that says, hey, I know who we need to film. And then you're kind of just helping guide those interviews and whatnot. This is how I kind of got to the point with this package. So when I first started, like everything that came in, I just looked at as cash flow and I justified it all by saying, well, it's going to give me the experience over here. And that's something, you know, I really would love to learn. So I just took basically everything on. I was never focused on a specific style video, a specific like, hey, this is what we do. Like think of a, a wedding video. You know, wedding videos are relatively always the same. You know, you do a wedding every weekend, you're shooting the same shots over and over again. You're relatively editing the same uh, storyline over and over again. And I realized like I needed to find kind of like products, video products that I could systematize that were like easy to do. So I could hire an editor to do it. I could hire someone to help shoot it. Um, Cause the problem I was running into with figuring all this stuff out is all my mental energy was going into figuring it out. And then I was constantly stressed being like, I don't know how this project is gonna go. So I would like not want to take on other projects because I'm like, I need all my energy to go here. And it just wouldn't let me grow because you're constantly in that space. And then when you don't know what you're doing on a project, you often quote it like a third of what you should because you don't have the confidence um, or you're quoting it and not realizing, oh man, I said I would implement the videos for this client. I didn't realize that would cost me $500 to pay a web developer to do it on a Shopify platform because there's a little bit of custom coding or something. You know what I mean? You learn things throughout projects as you go. Um, but that's how it was when I first started. So once I started doing brand videos, I started focusing on like videos for businesses and brands that just explained what they did. And I did like three of those. I realized, wow, this is a really good product that I could be offering across the board to different clients. And if we can get better and better and better at it, I can obviously charge more for that. The beauty of it too was like, typically those are filmed in a half day or a day. I could send it to an editor who could edit them all the same way. I knew my editing cost was, I think, 500 per video business card. So if I'm quoting a package at 5,000 and I'm hiring a videographer for a full day, paying him 100 an hour, that's 800, plus your $500 cost for an editor, you know, you're at 1,300. That means you net about 3,700 on that project. If you just did one of those a week, I was like, all right, perfect. That's 12, 13 grand every month. But the question in my head was like, how can that even get bigger? How, instead of just doing one video, can we make 10 or 11 that are going to actually make sense? And then we could charge quadruple five times, 10 times the amount because it's going to provide that much more value. So that's kind of how this package myself, I kind of like figured it out. And the other thing is it just lets you create a ton of content. So even after you do the main like 10, 11 videos on a project, you can finish that and say, hey, you know, I'm just looking at this project here. We've already done all the heavy lifting there's at least another five, 10 videos in here we could create, you know, otherwise it's just sitting on a hard drive. Like typically we would charge 10 grand or something like this, but for like, since we already did a lot of the work for another five grand, I can just get our editor to do it. You know, it's going to cover his costs. Let me know. Like, I think it would really help you guys. So it's another way to squeeze even more out at the end of the project as well. All right. So here's the first package that I did. This was for a child care chain. They had about 70 schools. And you can see it was three full days of filming, two travel days, and then we did 11 videos. And then the 10 second video bumper was kind of just like a, like a cool intro for all the videos. So this video, I actually have a, a breakdown here and I'm hoping the stream works pretty well. 
Hey guys, back with another riveting case study today. And today we're gonna to show you how one of our clients was able to achieve a positive ROI in just one month of implementing a video marketing campaign that reduced ad expense 40% while increasing conversions. Stay tuned, I'm gonna go over everything on this project, including the initial strategy, implementation, all the way through to the results they experience. Trust me when I say you don't wanna miss this one. Children America operates 60 plus educational childcare centers in 12 states. One of the challenges that we have in this business is really distinguishing ourselves and showing families that the COA experience, we like to call it, is vastly different than you're going to get from a run-of-the-mill neighborhood daycare or a childcare center that doesn't have an educational component. So what did we do? We sat down with the client and figured out everything about their existing system. We found out they're spending about $100,000 a month to get people from paid advertising to their homepage. Now, once a parent got to their homepage, they would click around, they would do their homework, but only about 4.6% of people clicked through to schedule an appointment to come view the schools. Once parents viewed the schools, their conversions were great. About 70% of parents who came into the schools actually signed up for their childcare services. The challenge was getting people from their website to actually book an appointment. All right, so what was going on in that project? These guys brought me in because they wanted to do actually social media content for different schools and whatnot. And I said, well, hold on, you know, before we get going at that, let's look at your system. What's going on? They told me, look, we don't need ads. We're, you know, we have a good ad person in place. We're really just focused on that. So I once again said, well, let's just look at it. You know, there might be something you guys don't see that I see or other ways to improve on that. And even if we can get that conversion up, you know, that would help the overall, uh, your budget, everything like that. So, the ads were working well. Once we had leads in, they were closing them at 70%, like a really, really high closing rate. But this was kind of like their hole in the bucket. So what we did was we set out to provide people with more information based around that. And instead of just doing one video that talked about the school, you know, you know, some parents would be interested on the safety. We knew some people would be interested on what the food was that they fed there. We knew some people would be interested in the curriculum. So we basically went in and came up with a, a bunch of just topics for the client and said, look, you know, these are, these are topics that we kind of came up with based on other videos we found on YouTube. And then they gave us kind of some of the video ideas that they had, and we picked the 10 best ones and then ultimately ended up creating those videos for the client. So we had three full days of filming with two travel days. Um, we listed out the client responsibilities and our responsibilities, always important. So they were responsible for arranging the shoot days, coordinating the uh, people that we were filming and kind of like handling the production side on that front. So we could just show up and interview them. Our deliverables, the timeline, um, other things that are always worth mentioning in contracts and just things to think about is, you know, is the client getting raw footage? Um, what, how do the travel expenses work? So you see, I outline, they pay for flights, baggage and per diem for food. Um, you know, if you're working with someone and they want to do an interview, who's providing the location? Are you filming at the client's house? Does the client have an office you can shoot at? Or are they expecting you to provide that? These are all things that you just need to think about and work into your contracts. I'm not going to go too deep into them right now. Save that for another day. Um, but there you see 25K, 11 videos. We filmed it in three days. If I were to break down editing and shooting costs on that, this is kind of how this package goes. So if you bring one videographer, you know, for a week, that's about 3,200. I paid my editor 2,500 to do the editing. Um, and then I had a little bit of gear rental. I paid someone to help implement the videos. So on that one project, I did about $18,000 in profit. If you were to just do one of these projects a month, that is like $220,000. And you're essentially just going to the shoots. Like that would just be three days of shooting for you plus a day or two, like coordinating with clients. You have someone else doing the edits, which is going to take, you know, three, four weeks, and you can be working on selling the next project. So to give you another example, same exact kind of package, just a different situation. So I changed the positioning. So first off guys with earn the deal, if all the time I made this mistake, someone would call me and say, Hey man, you know, I know you're doing video. I would love to know what it costs to do something like this. And like through five, 10 minutes, I would just give them a price and be like, you know, let me know. Um, once I started saying, hey, you know, I would love to talk to you about that project. I have a very specific process I follow, you know, but I need to, you know, I've got 10 million things going on right now. Let's set up a time to do a proper deep dive. 
And that's where you run, earn the deal. When I was just jumping into these sales conversations, I was not gathering all the information necessary to position my package or what I was selling or whatever it was in a way that made a lot of sense. Once I started saying, hey, look, I am busy. We need to set up a proper sales call. I know we're friends, but like this is, was not a call about being friends. This is business here. Let's set that up. And now you can be in the right state of mind and do your homework ahead of time and like actually go into this call prepared. So with this, you know, I had a first call with him. I didn't know what to do on it. I, I jumped into the mastermind, helped figure out how we could position and package this. Uh, I got the deposit two days later. This is a boat deck company. So they make this foam boat decking. Key takeaways from the earn the deal conversation on this. Okay. So I found out that they were getting leads from actually two different sources. One was just coming from their website that they were bringing in by themselves. And the other was they actually had a huge dealer network that was, they're the, ma the manufacturer. And then there's this huge dealer network that is actually the one that is providing a lot more leads. So down here, you'll see 80 to 85% of leads are coming through the dealer network. I took note of that. And you see, I put asterisks next to the couple of things I really took note on. The other big thing was, this was a big note, you know, they wanted to grow 5X that year. So I knew the CEO was hungry for it. So once again, that kind of qualified them to be over that million dollar in the range. And they were starting to do influencer marketing. I put that note in here is because when I did the research online, they didn't have one thing on, on YouTube for their company. So if they're paying an influencer to make or mention them in videos, and then someone searched on Decket, their biggest competitor would come up. So that was a huge thing I noted as well. Um, the sales process, main thing here, no difference if Decket produces the leads or not. It can come from the dealers. It can come from the site. It doesn't matter. But this was another huge takeaway. I said, okay, that's cool. So like, just talk, walk me through like what even like getting a dealer on board looks like. So we said they find them through the website. Then they'll email them through their submission form. Then the CEO reaches out, tries to set up a time to chat. Once he finally does that, so he tries to talk to about two people a day for about like, let's say an hour. So about 20 hours a month, he was spending time speaking to potential dealers. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. Like how many of those are actually quality? And I think he said, uh, oh, only 20% of those were actually quality. The other people thought it was going to be like a passive income thing, just weren't a good fit. So the bells in my head were going crazy because I'm like, you were wasting so much time on that. And then on top of that, when they onboarded a client, they spent a week training them. So like they wanted to bring on 30, 40, 50 new dealers that year. So I'm like, you're going to spend the whole year just training people. Like that's a full time, like what would you pay someone full time to be training people? You know, and that was 50, $60,000 a year. So I'm finding all these inefficiencies, right? They're spending 60 grand on someone just to train people. You know, the CEO is wasting 20 hours a month on calls that don't, or I guess it would be 16 hours a month on calls that don't even make sense. You know, the leads, it's way smarter to get, bring them through the dealer. I'm just making note of all of this so that when it came time to pitch the package, I presented it now in a way that made sense for this specific client. So Children of America had a different pain point and it was parents not finding enough information online. This company needed to protect their brand, right? They're having dealers now that are advertising their brand. It made way more sense to give the dealers assets that they could market themselves to protect that brand versus just letting them do whatever they wanted. We needed a main video business card or a brand video for their main website because they didn't have anything that explained why their product was so amazing. Client testimonials are always a staple. Um, and then I also position this like, this is all phase one, phase two is us running ads. So I said, we need to create some ads from this content, but the bigger aspect is building out this online training portal. And I just said, by building this portal, you know, any one of your new dealers can just log online, watch the videos. If they really have questions or really wanna come out, cool, bring them out for a half a day. Like don't even spend a full day needing to train them. If they hire new people under their team, hey, go watch the videos, learn how it's done. And then we could also, we created in there like, like a brand, like spot where you can download just different assets. So once again, this was what? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 videos, 11 videos, 25K, three days of filming, 
same basically editing package, all of that. The expenses kind of broke down almost the same exact way. So this is kind of the timeline on these projects too. You know, you figure three to four weeks for planning, a week to do the filming, and then you can edit the videos in three to four weeks. Obviously, all depending on how complex the pre-production is, how many people they need to be coordinating, um, your schedule and the client's schedule. But in a relatively quick time frame, you can accomplish these projects too. The majority is going to just be the editing and the planning. The actual shoot's the easy part. So this was my Decat initial retainer. So I pitched this in two phases. So those are you guys that are doing commercial campaigns and ads. I wanted to just show you, this was the one of the first commercial campaigns I had. So I, once again, didn't have a lot of confidence quoting it. I was cool just getting this. And you'll see, I even put an extra 250 into the ad budget month one, because I wanted to show them with a bigger budget. It was hard to get ad budget on this. So I was like, I wanted to show them with a bigger budget, what we can do now with the client, we're at about 5k in management because we do ad management and like some content for them. And then we have about 5,000 in ad spend. I always bill the clients for both. It just simplifies things in my opinion. Plus I get credit card points. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys be like, this is how you can grow. Like the second month working with them, they bumped the overall price here from 1500 to 3000. So they doubled it. And then we ran with that for another like two, three months. Then they bumped it to 5,000 overall. So I got I had 2000 management, 3000 in ad spend. And then at the beginning of this year, I was just like, you guys were going into summer. We got to get stuff set up. You know, there's a lot more competition out there now. And that's where I got, was able to bump them to the $10,000 uh, a month, which is really only five grand retainer. But another example, this is a 25K package, right? But instead of doing the 10 videos, the additional shoot days are kind of what is replacing those deliverables, if you will. So instead of just three, two to three days in one location, this actually requires us to go all over. We're planning to do the, the filming all in one week. And then we are creating just one video for this client, uh, two to three minutes long. So just to show you again, how like I'm basically taking that number and then kind of just using that as my starting point and kind of figuring out how I can shift things around within that. Here's another one. This was actually before I started doing the 25K, but it just shows you again, four half day shoots, 14 explainer videos. This one was, was a little bit more complicated because now we set up all the shoots within two days. This one was like, oh, we'll just pop out for a half a day here, half a day there. Like we were working around the client. Now we kind of go in and say, look, we need you to be working with us, clear the schedule. These days are ours. We need to get everything that we need to, and we won't bother you again for six months, a year, whatever it may be, uh, unless you want us to. And then you can pay us more. Um, so once again, a, another $30,000 package this time, but this one, we're only doing seven videos. The reason I charged more was there was a lot more coordination and these locations were all over that we had to handle the production side on, like, like coordinating with the clients and figuring out where to go. But once again, you see, it's just multiple videos. And because I broke it down for this company in a way that made a lot of sense, like look how each one of these videos can go into each one of your different avenues for your company. It made a ton of sense to them and they were down to do that. And keep in mind, none of these clients are local. This one was local. That's why I was willing to do the half day shoots. All of these other ones are all over the place. Cause I hear a lot of you guys saying, you know, I just got to this area and like my network's not that strong here. I get a ton of work from not even my area. And it's shocking like that someone, we flew to Minnesota for this. We flew to Napa for one. We flew to uh, New Jersey for one. New Jersey in winter. That's not, that's not a fun travel shoot, but <laughs> we got paid. So who cares? Um, so here, once again, I want to show you another moderate uh, version of this. But based on how earned the deal went, I did not think I could get the $25,000 up front on this project. So I actually pitched it in two phases and said, look, we'll do just the video business card first, gather some testimonials and whatnot. So that alone is a package you could pitch. If you're not confident doing the 11 videos, you could be going in and selling a video business card and some testimonials for, from anywhere from five to $10,000, no problem. Um, but then I tacked on the extra 10 videos for an extra 15K. This deal didn't close. Um, I wanted to just show you guys how you can break it up. And now actually what I do is I would put this at 15K and this at 10K. 
So in other words, it's like, look, for only another, like you're paying 15 grand for one video up here for another 10 grand, I can get you 10 more. It's because all the work is done in the planning and the pre-production and the actual shoot and the beginning of the edit. We're still going to be editing all this to make that one video. But with the extra budget, I can get my editor to create all these other assets that are going to make a ton of sense for your actual video funnel. So this was a much smaller project. This was just a one-off, but I wanted to show you guys here. Like a lot of times I don't know what's going to go into some of these projects and I don't know how many shoots it's going to be, or it's the, those details are not dialed in. And instead of taking a week or two to dial it in with a client before I even have dollar bills in my account, what I'll do is I'll set a range. So on this project, it was local. It was two minutes from my place. I said, look, we'll go out there up to nine times for up to a half a day to do all that. We were supposed to also fly to New York to do a shoot. Um, and then we did the post-production. This project, as you can see, was when? October 2019. So this was a while back. This was actually before I really figured out how to pitch um, bigger packages and retainers and whatnot. But I wanted to show you that like, sometimes you can be, you don't have to have all the details worked through in the very beginning. Just be confident in your ability to figure it out with the client and set some kind of measures. Commercial campaigns is kind of the second phase that I always look at with these. Sometimes I'm jumping straight into commercial campaigns because maybe they have the content. Maybe I could just be editing stuff they already shot. That during uh, COVID, that was one of the main things I did was, hey, you know, we work with companies to repurpose old content into actual marketing campaigns that produce results. If you're interested, let us know. This is a little different and I don't have a, nearly as much of a breakdown on the commercial campaigns but I'm happy to jump into any questions about that stuff for you guys. I'm gonna show you something I'm working on. All right, so I'm working on a new profitability equation, but I wanna show you the difference of high ticket offers versus lower margin offers and why it's such an easier sell and how this sheet, once it's fully optimized, is gonna help you dial it in. So with my client, they said they, were, they made about 1500 profit per sale. And he was willing to spend up to $500 to get each sale. And let's just say he wanted to move five units a month, right? Let's, let's say it's four actually for even numbers. So four units, that would give us $2,000 in ad spend. He needs to move 1.3 units to break even. It's like, do you not think we can sell one unit a month if we're putting $2,000 in ads with Rockstar videos behind it? You know, at those numbers, you know, if you can get a cost per acquisition at 500 bucks a month and your goal is four, this is your KPIs. You need to be getting about 667 clicks under a cost of $3 per click, leads under $100 to get 20 leads to come in to close at 4%. Because remember, you told me your closing percentage is 20%. But look, if we can get your closing percentage up to 30% by giving people like more videos or whatnot, it's going to help. It's going to give us an extra dollar and 50 cents that we can spend per click. This is how these little changes in different areas of your funnel can drastically impact the overall aspect of the campaign. And most people are only focused on one aspect and they don't realize that they could be fixing the thing that doesn't need to be fixed, right? So let's say the landing page only converts at 1% instead. Now you need to be getting clicks at $1.50 for it to make sense. So by adding additional content and further educating the customer on your landing page through other videos, if we can get that number to 3%, we can spend an extra $3 to get a client or customer in the door. And you can see across the board, like, let's say this was, let's say they only wanted to spend a hundred dollars, right? You can see, uh, I got to, I got to work on the reverse version of this, but let's make it to 2000 and ad spend again. Okay. So you can see that if we're spending $100 to acquire a, a client, you know, we only have 45 cents. We need to be getting clicks at 45 cents. I know based on industry standard, you know, most clicks come in at 75 cents to $5. I think that is going to be insanely challenging to do. So I can't like, if we do, you're going to profit about 28 grand that month and it'll be awesome. But I'm just letting you know, I think that number is a little unrealistic. If we're doing more like 375, cost per acquisition. I think this is way more realistic, you know, but even still, you're going to be profitable at this. If we're spending up to 750, you're still profitable each month. Like this makes sense across the board to get going because you only need 1.3 sales to make this happen. 
every way we look at it in terms of cost per acquisition, you know, is working. Like even if we spend up to a thousand dollars, you know, a thousand dollars and we have five grand in budget, like it's just profitable across the board. Like how would this not make sense to move forward into, right? Now let's take a, this is a supplement company I quoted. They sell for, they make about 80 in profit. They're willing to spend half of that for a sale, you know, and they wanted to move like 50 extra units a month. So 2000 ad spend. So they need to sell at least 25 units to break even on that. But look down here, you need to be getting clicks in at 18 cents and leads in at $6. Like that is so much lower. I don't think I've ever got, I probably got clicks at that point at some point, but I can't say that that campaign was being effective. It was just targeting like the cheapest traffic, you know? So nine cents, like these numbers are a lot more challenging to hit. So if I'm using this and seeing that, this client would not necessarily be as much as of a win-win for me because these numbers are all insanely low. Even if we bump this to $60, you know, 27 cents, like it just seems like it will be a lot, lot harder to win for this client. So from my perspective, I'm looking at that, this person saying, this is going to be a ton of work to figure out how to optimize this campaign and get it dialed in to make them successful enough for me to get a case study to double my prices for the next client. However, on the boat deck client, it was just, it was like so easy. I had $700, no, I had $500 to play with to close a deal. And I was, I knew if we could bring in anything even under that, it's only going to be way more effective. Uh, so... We've got some questions. For, for me, my mentality has for some reason been like, I'm all on my own. So I kind of like, didn't think of like, just hiring someone to like help with implementation of certain things. Like, I don't know why I never like thought of that when I go into a meeting. So the first implementation mistake I made was clients like, oh, and you guys can help us get on the website. I'm like, yeah, that's no problem. Just give me the, give me the check. Um, I just wanted to close the deal. Right. So I had a web guy that in the past has helped me with a couple of things. And I'm like, Hey, I need to get this set up. Like, and he jumped into it. And, uh, at the end I got a bill for 500. I was like, shit, I wasn't expecting that much. I was expecting like 50 bucks, hundred bucks or something. So moving forward, going back into value creation and the feedback loop you get every time you do something, my feedback loop there was any projects moving forward, we can implement at a charge for uh, at a cost of $500. You know, and I knew that this one project happened to be really complex because it like needed some custom coding and whatnot. But I also know other projects are literally plug and play and I would probably play, pay that web developer 50 bucks for it. So it was worth it to me. Like every time I'm thinking about building out a new offer into like the packages that we provide, right? I dial it in for a while with one client and figure out the system and figure out what it's going to kind of cost and figure out how it works and, and make it efficient and a case study for six months sometimes before I even present it to other clients. So I started just making video business cards, right? That was like the main thing I was doing. And then I was like, oh, we could do video business cards and testimonials. So we got like the video business card dialed in. Then we got our testimonial like product dialed in. Then I was like, oh, we should be doing ads. So after three or four different ad projects, you know, we figured out a really efficient way to be doing ads. And I can teach you guys that too, at some point. Um, then once we, we had the ads going and the commercial campaigns going, I started working on our consulting service because I knew that was the next like higher up value offer. But the consulting service took me over a year to dial in probably 18. From the time I signed up for my first consulting online program to the time I got my first con consulting client was about two years, but I was trying to jump in way too early. I didn't understand all this content strategy at that point. And I realized, look, I really need to be a master of this before I start talking to hundred million dollar companies and advising them on what they need to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I like that approach. Yeah. So it's like, it's like you're doing the shoots and edits right now, right? The first thing you can take off the plate is either shooting or editing. For me, it was editing because it just took a lot of my mental energy. And like, it's really hard to jump from editing something into a sales call into managing something else, you know? Um, so editing was always the biggest thing I knew I needed to, to get off my plate. And I just wanted to find someone that I could trust that I knew if I sell 10 projects, I know this guy can, can get them done, do them well. I don't need to like oversee every second of the, the process. Uh, someone else said they had a question. You guys can just jump on like a little less formal than, uh, the Q and a right now. Hey, Steve, I have a question. What's up? Um, 
So I kind of, I mean, I typed the question right before you just said what you said, but it's pretty much going off what you just said. The first thing that I've uploaded for myself is sort of like, I've, I have a designated DP that does the editing too, Israel, you know, um, he's my go-to man. I take him everywhere and kind of like, I can trust that he can hold it down with that stuff. And then I'm usually like B cam and audio and then give him the assets. He'll take care of the editing. But I was thinking in terms of like the ad campaigns and stuff, um, you know, is, is that something that like you recommend just like totally dedicating tons of hours to throwing myself into to specialize yes. in handling personally? Yeah. Rather than like just bringing someone on. I reckon. So what I, like, cause what it's going to do, Abby, is it's going to level you up to the next playing field in terms of that is content strategy, being able to yeah. understand the ads, being able to sit in a meeting and break down what's actually happening with an existing client campaign or whatnot, like the tedious part of ads is the management. So like, even if you just had, like what I did was I got our across the board, every one of these offers and products I've dialed in, I've worked with one client on that's been working with me for five years. They're always my guinea pig. And how it kind of works is look, I wanna try something new. Can you give me a little bit of budget? I plan on charging three times the amount to all my other clients, but like, I think this will work tremendously for you. And I just don't want to be losing money, like dialing it in type of deal. And, it, and it's always at least covered yeah. my cost to dial in kind of that system. So, so he was yeah. the first client I did ads with and I ran it for a while. And then once I got that going, it was very easy to be like, hey, ad manager, here's what's going on in this. Here's what's happening. Because um, the other aspect of it is by understanding ads, you're going to understand a lot more about what kind of content you should be creating and how to create it more efficiently and effectively. That makes sense. So ads, ads really shouldn't be something that like we consider offloading. That should be something that ad strategy is too valuable to offload. At yeah. Least it's now. just, just understand, like, once again, I'm not, I'm not a rock, like the best ad manager in the world by any means. Like it requires a lot of energy into campaigns to like keep, you know, um, just figuring out new things you can do and ways to move them along. But I understand it so much that any client I talk to, I don't care if they're spending 500 a month or 500,000 a month, I can still look at all of that and just understand like that what's happening. And by able, being able to go in and, and talk at that level, that's where these clients are like, oh man, you really know your stuff. Like I've, I've schooled ad managers in companies and sales meetings with their CEO. And they're like, but what do you know? And I'm like, well, what do you know? Because this is what I'm seeing. And like, why would you be sending all this traffic to one landing page when you have 18 different offers? Like you wonder why your ads aren't, are, aren't converting. You're not targeting anything specific or sending them anywhere. There's no flow. And it was just kind of like a, oh shit. Okay. We're, we're dealing with someone different here, you know? So it's always been just super beneficial to really understand, you know, how it works, start understanding kind of like KPIs for different campaigns or whatnot down the road. It's like hiring an editor. If you have no sort of creative vision, it will be very challenging. And that makes or, sense. Or hiring yeah, an assistant producer and you've never produced stuff like that. They're going to be like, what do I do? And you're going to be like, hopefully you figure it out. <laughs> it's you know? <a> thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And the other thing too Thank is you. like, this is kind of like a matter of personal preference. So my life lesson that I learned before I started this company was I started a virtual reality development company. And I was like, I need to have the craziest new tech idea. And like, like I'm going to raise money and just be like a crazy tech CEO, whatever. Um, I hired a, or I partnered with a virtual reality developer that was building all these applications in virtual reality. The reason I got into 360 cameras and drones was to help create content for the virtual worlds we were building. I would spend weeks doing stuff and then we would meet, you know, like a week or two. He had a job. And so we would work nights and weekends, whatever. And then we'd meet up and I'd be like, all right, where were you on what we needed to do? And he would be like, oh, I didn't do anything on that. But look what I did. I just built an app to pitch Louis Vuitton for $50 million. And I'm like, okay, that's not the plan. That's we're going after real estate developers. Why did you spend time doing that? Like, so after two, three months of like trying to do that, I was like, I need to start something that is always kind of in my control and that I understand what we're doing because he could spend two months working on something and come to me and, and it could be like, a, I had no idea what was happening. So for me, I always wanted, I wanted to master marketing. I wanted to understand all of it enough. 
so that I could hire an ad manager effectively. I could hire a copywriter effectively. I could hire someone for SEO effectively, et cetera, knowing I could always step out of those positions. But once I had that knowledge and understanding for me personally, it made me more valuable to clients. And then you can find like the other value that comes like being a connector is a huge value for clients. Hey, by the way, I'm not a rock star at SEO. I understand it. I'm not a rock star at ads. I understand it, but I have the people. What was, what's the line from, from, I think it was Henry Ford when they asked him a question, like, you don't even know how to do any of this. And he's like, of course I don't, but I have a button on my desk. And when I press it, one of five people is going to call me and give me the exact answer that I need. So why would I waste my time and energy knowing all the intricacies of that stuff when my job is to be overseeing it all and making sure it moves everything forward? It's kind of the same concept. If you're able to connect those dots for clients and then also provide solutions like that, look, I got a trusted person here or there. That's also, even if all you do is get a referral fee from that person for 10%, there's cash in that too. That makes sense. So don't step out of a role until we feel like we've like kind of mastered it in a sense. So the stuff that I have offloaded are things that, you know, I already feel very confident. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like full mastery, but you know, like there's a reason that I still have clients, even though I'm doing all the coaching stuff now, it's how I keep my finger on the pulse of what's actually happening in the industry and how I stay sharp and how I'm still moving things forward and learning more things that I can bring to you guys, you know? Um, I think like what, what happened to me, Abby, was it came to a time where I physically had to rely on people and just step back and cross my fingers and hope. At one point, this was way early on. I was in South Africa. I had a videographer in France and had an editor here in the US. And I was like, I am way in over my head. I have no, like, like I didn't even touch the, the project for France. I was just like, hey man, this is happening. You need to figure it all out hopefully this works. Like we crushed that. We crushed everything else at home. Like it worked. And that gave me the confidence to take the next big jump of stepping back. Some of my trips, um, like trips to Alaska or Antarctica, part of that is like a test for me too. I'm going to be without Wi-Fi for a week. I got two months to plan. What do I like? What kind of systems need to be in place? What do I need to do so that if I'm unplugged for a week, everything just doesn't crumble. So it, it pushes you to hit those spots one, like once you get there. I've always been, like I always look way far in the future and kind of freak myself out about everything that needs to happen or who I need to hire or whatever. And uh, me and Keith were talking about this yesterday. And then like every time I'm like, my back's against the wall and I'm like, shit, I knew I should have been planning for this or whatever. The solution just like literally comes to me, usually in a form of an Instagram DM. I can't explain it. The first time I really needed a, a shooter and producer, that's when I met Alec Abbey. He DM'd me on Instagram. The second time I needed another editor, my other guy, Chase, like found me on Instagram somehow. My copywriter reached out and like assistant right when I was like, I'm, that's weird. I'm posting for an assistant this week. Um, and I can't say like, I think what happens is just like subconsciously you start doing these things that you don't even realize. And then it just manifests itself in a way. So like, don't stress too much over like how you're going to do all this stuff. Because the other thing is the sum of the activities you're doing now, Abby, say 30% of them you don't know how to do right now and you're not good at it and you don't have systems that was requiring a lot of energy and, and all this other stuff. But guess what? In two, three months time, that will be second nature. And you're going to have all that 30% of energy to figure out the next thing. So that could be, okay, now I understand ads really well and I feel comfortable enough to bring someone in who can also teach me as I go or something like that too. You know, look for people that could build an ad department under them if, if they chose to versus just a freelancer who's going to slap budget at something and not, not know like, like how will you know if your campaigns are doing well if you can't jump into a campaign and analyze kind of what's happening? Yeah, that's super helpful. Thank you. No problem. What else we got? Hey, you got any pointers for, uh, we talked about yesterday for uh, outreach and then, keep hitting up uh, YouTubers that have some sort of business model. What about uh, pointers for reaching out to companies that need just that already have all this, the content filmed, like how you pitch that content retainer for video editing services? So there's two. So one, we are doing the filming on that big retainer. Um, there, there's, there's two things I think about, and this kind of ties into where if you had a shooter, it could help because it's like, hey, we can do the shoots and the edits. 
versus you're providing more of a, a value prop versus just, oh, we can just do the edits. Cause that means they still need to figure out how to shoot the videos and what videos to create. And if they aren't already doing that, I see that as a much harder like thing to crack into. Hey, big corporation, I can edit all your videos. It's like, well, who's going to shoot them, you know, or what are we making or whatever that may be. So maybe you just approach it. You could approach it differently. Like, uh, you know, I do content strategy at help with editing, all this other stuff. If you want to chat, let's learn more. Um, that's where I see if they have that Keith. that's where I see learning the content strategy and how ads could work and how ads works. It's like, Hey, I have existing content. If you have existing content, I can create social media content from it. Um, ads for marketing funnels or anything else like that. And now you're kind of approaching them with a little bit more of a, Hey, look at all these other things we can do. And then the real, like, let's say you get some of those in. And what happened to me is like, you might get a two, $3,000 retainer in there. And then that client's like, dude, it's great. But like, we really need to step up the shooting. How do we do that? Then it's like, oh, like, what if we handled the shooting? All you really need to do is find the videographer if you don't want to shoot it yourself or do the shoot yourself, but you can bring in that person. Now you're handling the, the kind of the produ producing for the shoot. You're handling managing the videographer. You're handling the edits. You're handling content strategy. You, you can double your retainer to $6,000 a month and just pay someone $400 to come out and help you with the shoot that day. But just because you're, you're now coordinating more moving pieces and providing more value, that's where you're going to be able to charge your clients more. And if you have results from other YouTube channels you've helped grow, guess what? You'll be able to charge even more because I have case studies in place of like, look, you're not the first one I've done this for. We've done it time and time again. Like, do you want to work with the best person or do you want to spend the next year trying to figure this out and then come back and, and my prices are going to be double, triple. I might not even be making, taking on clients because, you know, <laughs> but th that's like exactly what I told that 10 K a month retainer. I'm like, their competitor is on YouTube. They need YouTube content. And I said, cool, we can start tomorrow. I just need 10 grand a month. We'll do four videos and some reels. Half of that content's already like kind of edited in a sense um, from the original projects we did on that. And so now we're just going in creating more and more content for them instead of having it sit on hard drives. That's cool. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So you would need to find people that are already doing videos and a lot of it, or like, I love the growing people's YouTube channel pitch. Because those are a lot of editing. They're long, long videos, longer, you know. Um, I'm trying to get a couple more five or 10 grand retainers just to build corporate YouTube channels or do that 25K video package. That 25K video package is also the perfect, you know, let's say a client's like, we want to get going on YouTube. Boom, that's your angle. What this is going to do is establish your presence on YouTube. You realize when someone Googles your company name, what comes up? It's your competitors, it's bad reviews and this and that. We need to bury all that and get as much content on YouTube as possible. The other benefit is it's not like a social media post where 48 hours later, it's dead. We're gonna base this around what people are already searching for. We're gonna put the right tags in there so it gets found for years, continuously driving business to your site. Like, do you plan on being out of business in three years? Like, well, no, of course not, you know? Okay, so like, why would that not make sense? We already figured out you know, you only need three units to break even this month. Like, I think we can do 10, 20, 30. Like, let's go, you know, get them excited. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I got to jump onto another live stream. But if you have questions about anything we went through or there's stuff you want me to go deeper into or something I said, hey, I'll cover that later. Drop it in Slack. Let me know. So this presentation came out of the conversations I'm having with y'all. So the more you guys can keep kind of priming me, I know where to focus my energy on. A lot of the stuff with what we're doing comes down to community, mindset, all of that. So we got to keep building that. But that's it for this session. I'll get this in the portal as soon as I can. If you guys got questions, let me know and let's make the rest of the day legendary people.